I do appreciate those of you who remember us in prayer, uh, not only in this service, but in other services, as we seek to share the word of God with his people. It's a big responsibility as well as a big honor, but we need your prayers, and uh, I'm always confident and grateful that uh, there are those of you who remember us in prayer. Our message this morning comes in the series that I'm continuing with you. This is portrait number 23. Jesus is the shepherd of God's sheep. Sheep and shepherds were an important part of life in Israel from the time of Abraham, over 2,000 years before the Lord Jesus was born. The first sacrifice made to God, which was acceptable to him, is recorded in Genesis chapter 4, way beyond before Abraham. The sacrifice was that of an animal or animals, probably sheep or goats. Therefore, God's shepherds had an important role in Israel's life and culture. The sons of Jacob were all shepherds at the time Jacob sent Joseph to them with provisions of food and other things. King David, while still a youth, was a shepherd. It was he who wrote Psalm, Psalm what? Psalm 23, where he refers to the Lord God as his shepherd. And he compares himself to that of a sheep. So in Psalm 23, if you're interested, would like to be blessed this coming week. In Psalm 23, we have a sheep speaking to us through the word of God. And here in John chapter 10, we have the shepherd, the great shepherd himself speaking to us. Jesus the shepherd has always been a relationship shepherd. Let's notice the relationship between Jesus and his sheep. First, in John chapter 10, verse 2, the man who enters the sheep pen by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The true shepherd is the only one who has the right to enter the sheep pen by the gate or by the door. Those who try to enter the sheep pen by another way reveal themselves to be of dubious character, thieves and robbers, according to Jesus. They do not really care for the spiritual welfare of God's sheep. Notice the double acceptance of the true shepherd in verse 3. One, the watchman opens the gate for the shepherd. And two, the sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. My question this morning to each one of us is, do you have an ear? No, I'm not talking about a physical ear. Do you have an ear for the voice of your shepherd? The sheep listen for the shepherd's voice. Also in verse 3, we see the first mention of the close relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. He calls his own sheep by name. 
not number by name. Did you know that your name is carved or written on the palm of his hands? Did you know that? He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The Lord Jesus, the good shepherd, knows all his own sheep by name. Anyone want to say hallelujah this morning? Thank you, Lord. You're free in our English service to respond. Okay? The Lord Jesus, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, knows all his own sheep by name. If you are one of his sheep this morning, he knows you by name. Hallelujah. Each sheep, therefore, enjoys a personal relationship with Jesus. There, my, our, your good shepherd. And in verse 14, Jesus states very clearly, I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. Do you know Jesus this morning? We didn't read to verse 18 in the interests of time because we are restricted in our Sunday morning service. But if you want to allow the Holy Spirit to bless your heart, I suggest you read John chapter 10, verses 1 right through to verse 18. Once every day this coming week. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. In chapter 10, verse 4, the Lord Jesus talks of doing what every shepherd in Israel did. That was when he led his sheep from the sheep pen, the security and the safety of the sheep pen, he always went ahead of his sheep. This is a big difference from Europe and maybe North America. The shepherd in Europe go behind their sheep with one, two, three or more dogs to protect or to guide or to steer the sheep. But not so the shepherd in Israel. He always went ahead of his sheep. Here, Jesus is teaching us that he does the same in the lives of his sheep. If you're a true sheep, of God this morning, Jesus is going ahead, maybe one meter, not too far, so he's in very close contact with you, and you can be in close contact with him. He's not away on the horizon, no, but he is ahead. There are two main reasons for the Israeli shepherd to go ahead of his sheep. And there are two main reasons why Jesus goes ahead of us. They are these. Firstly, the shepherd was looking for a suitable place to take the sheep to eat, to drink, and to rest safely. So he was going ahead with his eyes fully open and fully aware of where was a suitable place to take his sheep. Secondly, he was also looking out for any signs of danger. One of the most serious dangers for sheep in Israel and for you and me today is this, hidden danger. 
hidden dangers. And in Israel, one of the most potent hidden dangers were poisonous snakes in the sand. Much of Israel, even today, is desert. And in the sand were sand snakes. And as the shepherd went ahead of his sheep, he would look for holes about the size of a golf ball in the, in the sand. And he would take one of the smooth stones in his little pouch. You remember the story of David? He wasn't faced with a sand snake. He was faced with what? A giant defying God and the people of God. That's another kind of danger. But the danger we're looking at this morning was this. Very likely, a sand snake would be in that little hole. So the shepherd would take one of his smooth, round stones from his little pouch, drop it in the mouth of the hole, and step on it, thus sealing the hole. And as the sheep followed, totally unaware of the danger, they were safe. Brothers and sisters, there are dangers all around us, both visible and hidden. Sometimes you and I are not aware of the hidden dangers, but Jesus is. And as you trust, commit your life to him, not only day by day, but hour by hour and moment by moment, your shepherd is watching over you individually as well as collectively. Sometimes for us as God's children, serious dangers are hidden or unexpected. But if we walk closely with our God shepherd, with our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, we will be safe. In Psalm 23, verses 2 and 3, David speaks as a sheep where he states, He, the shepherd, makes me to lie down content in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. Is that correct? No, for his name's sake. You and I carry the name of Jesus in our lives, in our thoughts, in our actions, day in, day out. Are you aware of that? You carry the name of your beloved shepherd. But he restores our soul. He leads us. He doesn't drive us. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his namesake. David knew well that sheep need what, she, she, what sheep need because he was a shepherd. The Lord Jesus, as our good shepherd, 
knows what we need. So as we obey him and follow him closely, he will provide for every need in our lives. Just very quickly, 10 basic characteristics of sheep. One, they are helpless. Two, they cannot protect themselves. Three, they cannot find their way. They get lost very easily. They can't find food by themselves. They can't clean themselves very well. They can't get up if lying on their backs. They will suffocate to death. They will die if no one helps them. They follow each other even into trouble. They're good followers, but not very smart. In fact, sheep are among what we would call the dumbest of God's created animals. They follow each other even into trouble. They can only drink water that is perfectly still. You remember just now, he leads me beside turbulent waters? No, still, quiet waters. If they try to drink water that is moving, they will choke. Many animals face the same problem. They are easily frightened. They won't rest or lie down until they are satisfied and sense peace. Spiritually, we are very similar to sheep. And in many Bible verses, we are compared to sheep. What do we read in Isaiah 53 verse 6? We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We follow each other into sin, into trouble. No problem. If big brother's doing it, why not little brother? If big sister's doing it, why not little sister? We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And in John 10, verse 4, Jesus says, When he, the shepherd, has brought out all his own sheep, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. Do you know the voice of your shepherd this morning? And are you following him? This is so important. Normally, sheep are good followers, although sometimes a sheep may go off by itself and get lost, as Jesus brings out in Luke chapter 15, where he reminds us of the shepherd looking for that one lost sheep. Here in verse 4, the Lord Jesus is saying that his sheep follow him because they know, they recognize his voice. There are various voices in our lives sometimes, so knowing the shepherd's voice is very important, and more importantly, obeying his voice. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is our shepherd. And the great desire of our hearts this morning is that we may not only know his voice, hear his voice, but obey his voice. In Jesus' name.
Amen.